Welcome to Avatech Online. As one of our five basic senses, sound plays an important role in all aspects of our lives. This clip covers the basics of how sound is created, transmitted, and received. It also explores how the intensity of sound can pose very real danger to the aviation technician. There are three basic elements of every perceived sound. These are a source, a medium for the sound to travel, and finally a detector to receive the sound. There are hundreds of sound sources, a jet engine, a communication radio speaker, a voice talking in the hangar, for example. The typical medium for sounds that we hear is the air, and the ear is our sound detector. Sound moves in the form of waves. Sound waves travel in much the same way that a wave travels through water. Because waves and water are easy to see, they make a good analogy for illustrating how sound behaves. Drop an object into a body of water. What happens? It causes a splash and physical waves ripple out from that point. The dropped object is the source of the wave. The water is the medium carrying the waves, and the surrounding container is the receptor. Sound works the same way. A speaker is a common source of sound waves. Electrical impulses are sent from an amplifier to the flexible cone in the speaker, and the cone begins to vibrate. As the cone in the speaker pushes forward, it compresses the air molecules in front of it. The cone of the flexible speaker then retracts, creating an area of rarefied air in front of the speaker. These alternating compressions and rarefactions from the speaker create a series of sound waves. As the loudspeaker vibrates, it causes the surrounding molecules to vibrate in a pattern that can be represented by a waveform. When this waveform is received by the ear, the eardrum then vibrates in the same pattern or frequency as the waveform. It is important to understand that air molecules do not actually travel from the loudspeaker to the ear. That would be wind. Each air molecule only moves a very small distance as it vibrates, but it causes the molecules next to it to vibrate, resulting in a rippling effect. Decibel is the measure of sound intensity. Sound intensity is the critical safety area for technicians. The smallest change that a human ear can detect is around one decibel. A human whisper falls in the 20 to 30 decibel range. Normal conversation falls in the 60 to 70 decibel range. A rivet gun produces sound around 100 decibels. The aviation ramp is even noisier. Military turbojets produce sound in the 140 to 150 decibel range. F-18 fighter jet engines have been measured at 148 decibels. Commercial aircraft are a bit quieter. Low bypass turbofans normally measure in the 120 to 140 decibel range and modern high bypass turbofans are in the 100 to 120 decibel range. Severe ear damage can occur quickly at sound levels above the 130 decibel range. Prolonged exposure to noise levels above 80 decibels can also cause hearing damage. Most regulatory agencies require that hearing protection be worn when working around anything with sound levels above the 90 decibel range in order to prevent hearing loss. Any aircraft operation creates sound levels above this level. Always wear hearing protection when operating power equipment or working around operating aircraft. To further explore the principles of sound and how it relates to aircraft in flight, you can go to the complete online course. This course, along with many other educational programs, are available on the web at 
www.avotech-online.com. You can also find our complete list of textbooks, reference materials, and training equipment, especially designed to support AMT schools, at www.avotech.com.